So a question I was asked the other day is, is it okay to let your clients flex their spine if they are experiencing back pain? And the answer I gave was, as always, I suppose, is it depends. Depends on the context of the situation and the client itself. But an argument I want to present today is actually how important it can be to allow your clients to flex their spine and why that might be important. So first of all, as I mentioned a minute ago, it does depend on context. Would you allow your client to flex their spine when doing a deadlift or a backloaded squat or anything weight bearing? It doesn't make sense because in those positions and those contexts, you wanna make sure you've got good joint centration, good alignment, and that's where coaching and having certain sort of rules, I suppose, within the movement is kind of key. But the side I want to think about things from today is, how about real life? How about activities of daily living? How about kind of helping someone get out of pain? How about recalibrating pain and movement? Then maybe we've got to think about out of the box and not just think about our traditional squats, deadlifts, whatever it might be. Maybe we've got to think about, okay, yes, we want to get someone stronger and fitter in the gym, but can we also offer a bit more value by helping someone outside the gym? And the two work hand in hand, don't they? If someone's moving better outside the gym, it's probably going to help them inside and vice versa. So think about activities of daily living where you might need some sort of spinal flexion. So first of all, it might just be sat down. How I'm sat down right now, I have some low grade spinal flexion in my lumbar spine. Maybe if I'm going to go and put my shoes on or do, do my shoelaces up, I'm going to need some sort of spinal flexion. Getting out of bed in the morning, you need some sort of spinal flexion. If you think about the movements you do every single day or your clients do every single day that involve some sort of flexion, you're going to come up with quite a few. So by totally avoiding that movement, are you helping them for activities that they live in or hindering them? Okay, and the way I think about it with movement in general is if we don't use it, we're probably going to lose it. We look at how we evolve and how we develop movements from uh, being babies into young children. We, we flex and bend our spines. And if we look at kind of the other end of the spectrum, we look at sportsmen, you know, people like tennis players, they're going to be loading their spines in loads of different ways. So if we want to move well, we want to help get someone out of pain and we want to reduce the chance of injury happening and maybe make people more resilient, then introducing some sort of spinal flexion I feel could be a really good tool in your coaching. Now we know there could be a lot of fear avoidance towards flexion and that in turn might lead to a lot of maladaptive behaviour. So what I mean by that is if someone's hurt their spine through flexing or they feel pain when they flex, they're probably going to avoid it and that might lead to them having some sort of maladaptive behaviour, especially long term. So long term, we see a lot of people with chronic pain who've experienced it for sort of three, four months, maybe sometimes years, or they get flare-ups every couple of months. We tend to see a lot of maladaptive behavior. So they, they avoid those movements. They might avoid movements within the gym, squatting, deadlifting. They might avoid movements outside, or they, they'll find a way around it by keeping their back really upright, bracing, guarding, maybe bending their knees and ankles a lot. But potentially, a lot of maladaptive behaviour in the long term might need, lead to secondary overuse injuries. So if we can start to allow the body to realise it's okay to flex, and allow the body to move in different types of ways and have different options in movement, and ultimately more variability, that again could be a really useful tool for your clients. So I believe in giving people more options when it comes to movement, and spinal flexion just being one of those options. And we look at real life human movement, really a good mover has not necessarily a lot of dictated rules, they have the ability to move in lots of different ways. So we think about the real world rather than just thinking about the gym. And if we can kind of think about, okay, what does someone need to do in the gym and the real world, then you've got the real holistic view to your coaching. So generally, I would encourage people who experience back pain to flex but it's about how I do it and how I prescribe it. That is the most important thing. So it makes sense to start small. Would I just stand someone up and straight away lead into a big flexion-based exercise? It depends on the client, but maybe in the early stages, I might start quite small. It might be something as small as pelvic tilting. It may be just laying on their back 
and just bringing one knee to the chest and back down. And that is what you call a bottom-up driver. So the leg is driving the pelvis into tilting, which is causing the spine, the lower part of the back to flex. And that is a great low-grade place to start a lot of people. My goal is to allow my clients to flex in different contexts and different ways that doesn't cause pain, that they feel happy with, so they've got more options to move in different ways. I can play about different drivers, I can play about different contexts, could be lying down, could be sat down, it could be standing, play about the, uh, using arms, legs in different positions. Use movement as a really good tool to help recalibrate flexion and maybe recalibrate the pain that they're feeling right now. Keep an open mind. Very often with human movement, we're quite dogmatic and quite closed-minded. So keep an open mind and think, can you use movement to help your clients, especially when it comes to reintroducing flexion? And ultimately, think of it like this, guys. We're here to develop a fitter, healthier body, or help someone develop a fitter, healthier body. And if we're gonna do that, we want to allow that body to be more resilient and if we can start to allow someone to have more options in moving different ways and different speeds, they can have a more resilient, fitter, healthier body that's going to reduce the chance of injury in the future and ultimately have a fantastic health and fitness journey.